Hello all you beautiful people out there, what is going on? This is Fran Barry coming to us another Crucible video, and today we are going to be talking about Crucible Sloppy Launch. And that's a really nice way of putting it. So I hope you guys enjoy this video, drop a like if you do, and let's get right into it. So full disclosure, I am a Crucible partner, I did get access to the game early, and I was able to play behind closed doors. So I have about 35 hours of logged game time according to Steam at the time of making this video and i was looking at the steam reviews and they're pretty mixed right now with only 42 percent having positive reviews and i read a couple of them and and i understand some of them and i want to try and tackle this topic as objectively as i possibly can personally what i want to state is that i've really really enjoyed the game so far and i thoroughly thoroughly enjoy the gameplay and i understand the gameplay and i understand what the game is meant to be but I know a lot of people might have played for a couple hours and just dropped it because they're like, yeah, this is just too frustrating. And I just kind of want to tackle that to see if this game is for you or if it isn't or if you just come back to it later. And I think at the end of the day, most people will just come back to it later because I do see a lot of potential in this game. So let's start off with the ugly. Uh, this game was supposed to release at noon Pacific time, Wednesday, May 20th, and it was heavily delayed in North America. Uh, for a couple hours, it seemed like. I got in early, obviously. I'm, again, a partner, so I had a key that got me in early. I was streaming since 9 a.m., three hours earlier to the expected launch time. And I was having a great time. People in chat were having a good time. But then when noon came around, people were starting to freak out in chat. Why can I not download the game? Where's the download button? Or if I do download the game... Uh, then I can't get in, the servers are crashed, etc. So there were a lot of issues day one, which you don't really want to expect out of a game that's being published by Amazon. It's a little ironic to think that a game being published by Amazon is having issues with its own Amazon servers, but that's neither here nor there. The point is people expected more out of Amazon, and even though you can make the claim that well, every game nowadays launches with bugs and issues and nobody is perfect. I agree. I am in that corner, but I also understand the other side of things where, well, I mean, it's Amazon. You expect Amazon to have their shit together. They're going, they're a trillion dollar company. Come on, Jeff Bezos. What are you doing? Even though Jeff Bezos has nothing to do with this game, <laughs> which is really funny. So there were some issues logging on EU. Uh, eventually got their button later as well. I'm pretty sure all these issues are resolved. So good news is, silver lining, they did resolve the issues pretty quickly, relatively speaking, you know, next day everyone can play now. However, there were also some issues with people meeting the minimum requirements with the PC specs, but for some reason the game was telling them that you cannot download this game, you don't meet the minimum requirements. So I'm not sure if that one was resolved, if that's more on the user side of things, or if that is on Relentless Studios and, and Crucible side of things. Uh, so there, there were there were quite a, a couple of issues when it came to just even getting into the game itself, which is a really, really big no-no, obviously. It's a really big no-no. Even if you got into a game, there was a chance that you would crash, or someone on your team would crash, or someone on the enemy team would crash. I did experience multiple crashes, not personally, but other people were crashing. And then that would kick everybody out of the lobby and then you'd have to get back into queue. I personally have a decent enough PC, knock on wood, that I didn't experience that too often. I did experience that a little bit behind closed doors, but they ended up stabilizing it a little more. The servers were also more stabilized than they were uh, behind closed doors, but I did see a lot of negative feedback about optimization. And... I did experience some stutters. I did experience some, you know, high frame rate, you know, like in the top right corner it would blink, blink, like high latency is what it would blink. I did experience that a couple of times where I would just be in the middle of a fight and then my everything would freeze. And then two seconds later, you know, I'm back, right? Like that kind of stuff. Obviously, you don't want that, especially in a very competitive game. You want things to run smooth like butter. So there are things that can be improved upon. However, the developers of Relentless Studios... Spending the time with them, interacting with them behind closed doors, they're all really, really good people and really hard workers. And if anyone is disappointed, I can bet you a million dollars that they are the most disappointed and frustrated with this entire situation. And I can bet you that they're trying their best to make it all better because this was their love child. This is their love child. They've been working on this for like five years, it's been in development. And, uh, you know, it sucks to see that. It really does suck to see that. 
However, as for the gameplay, you'd probably see a lot of reviews on Steam saying that the characters are not balanced, and I heavily, heavily, heavily disagree. I just think that they haven't played the game long enough. This game is not a simple game, as much as people want to say that it's very basic and straightforward. The characters, the hunters, have a large learning curve to them if you want to play them masterfully, okay? It's not as straightforward as point and shoot and pew pew. You really do have to understand how your abilities and your traits work in relation to all the other hunters abilities and traits how they work with the ones that are on your team and how they work versus the people on the enemy team it does take multiple 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 hours just to get good with one of these hunters and even then you still not might be the best your aim still might be a little subpar compared to some other people you've guys seen the people that i've seen play this game when they've mastered a certain hunter it is a work of art. It's actually kind of insane, and it's really, really fun to watch. It's really fun to watch a Sazan that knows exactly when to use which weapon, how to rotate, how to position herself, and there's just no other uh, comparison to it. If you're just playing Mendoza and all you're doing is sprinting around and shooting, then yeah, you're going to feel like this game's kind of boring. But once you start, you know, leveling up your skill level, and then you're trying out these other hunters that just play very, very differently, you might come across a roadblock you know some characters are really hard to play for example Dracal, i'm still really bad with him and i'm trying to get better with him and I'm, I'm having a great time learning how to play with him i'm getting those aha moments like i finally landed a grapple hook i chained a grapple hook into a stun i you know chained my lifesteal into a spin attack and then i boosted out of there and did like a 180 with my right click where i swing my axe to cause a projectile to fly at them. There's a lot of really cool moments in this game once you actually play it enough to really unlock that hidden potential, which I referred to in the beginning. And I do see a lot of potential for competitive play in this game. But there are a couple things that stood out to me. And also, some good points were made in, in some of the Steam reviews, where it felt like the game has a quote-unquote identity crisis, where they're trying to juggle too many things at once. As much as I am a fan of all three game modes, I mostly just play Heart of the Hives. I don't really play Alpha Hunters, which is the Battle Royale game mode. And when it comes to balancing, it's hard to balance characters around all three game modes at once. You're probably just going to pick one game mode, which is going to be your most competitive one. I'm assuming it's going to be the 4v4 Heart of the Hives game mode. And it's hard to balance for the other ones because some characters are really, really good at Heart of the Hives and some characters are not the same when it comes to Alpha Hunters. For example so that is something to keep in mind as well when you're trying to go forward with this game so hopefully relentless studios kind of narrows that down and, and figures out what they really really want to do and another thing that is really really awkward to have in this day and age especially if you want to be a competitive game or rather should i say it's awkward to not have this feature in the game if you want to be competitive and that is text chat and voice chat um league of legends has text chat it also has voice chat. Uh, I don't think people really use the voice chat, though. Most people just flame each other through text. I'm pretty sure Overwatch has in-game voice chat, no text chat. Well, actually, on PC, I think it does have text chat, now that I think about it. Regardless, what I'm trying to say is that you should have at least one or the other at minimum. The ping system is nice, but it's really hard to teach new players, especially that hey the hive's up we should go get the hive or hey here's this health amplifier let's go grab that first or let's get the damage amplifier because it'll boost our damage permanently for the rest of the match it is really really hard to kind of guide people when they have no idea what's going on they're just playing farming simulator 2020 so i do think that you need some kind of in-game voice chat which i know that they have said that they're working on it uh, i just kind of feel like they should have already had it I don't know what their reasoning would be behind not having it, maybe to reduce toxicity or something, but at this day and age, you just kind of have to let it fly, you know? Toxicity is always going to be there. There's always going to be good people in the community. There's always going to be bad people in the community. It's just up to us to try our best to be as positive as possible, as helpful as possible. And the people that I played with in Crucible are all really, really nice people, and they try to help each other especially the the guides the people that have been testing for a really long time they really 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 want to teach people and they really want as many people as possible playing this game because it is a lot of fun when you actually know what you're doing and when your team actually knows what they're doing the game is actually a ton of fun 
I know, crazy, right? But again, if you're like new and you get into the game, I can understand that the solo queue experience right now can be really, really, really frustrating because you're trying to do this, your team is over there doing that, and you're not really working together as a team. Because it is a team-based game. Regardless of what anyone says, it is a team-based game. If you're running together as a four-man squad and you run into the enemy, there's only two of them, you're most likely gonna win that fight 99% of the time, unless you are totally potato. So playing together as a team, rotating objectives together as a team is really, really important in this game and really fun and rewarding when you do capture objectives together as a team. It makes you feel really, really good. Now, last note that I want to make, I know this video is kind of long, but I just want to give all my honest thoughts here, guys, is that some things could use a little more oomph, you know, a little more feel, a little more feedback, maybe just a tiny bit more screen shake on some things. I don't know. I personally don't mind. I personally am okay with a lot of the things. I understand the game well now after playing it for 35 hours. I know what does what. I know when, you know, what, how. I get a hit like what happens on my screen when i get a hit i do understand the feedback that is currently in the game i understand the hud i understand the ui i know how to open up the map and, and read it at this point i know where to go almost off of memory in certain locations i have stuff memorized at this point so uh even with all that said i still think that some abilities could have just a little more oomph or just feel a little bit better like when you get a headshot with a jonah for example maybe add like an extra little sound effect with it like make it just feel really really good you know like oh yeah i want to get more headshots for example stuff like that dracal feels pretty okay but again like with his lifesteal claw it would be nice to know if you like actually like landed it on them besides just seeing the hit marker like there, there's just little, some things just little things like when you're kind of the moment you can't really pay attention to things but if you have something in the game that makes you feel like you actually did something or feel like you landed that ability or you landed that claw attack, for example, with your call, I think that would just make the game just feel a little more polished, just a little better. There, there's just a, a bunch of little polished details that they could work on, but I don't really think it's game breaking. I really don't think that you should write a negative review just because of that. I do think that the botch launch in the beginning was a big whoopsie. Uh, they did kind of rebound and fix that for the most part which is really good and credit where credit is due relentless studios they work fast and they work really hard and we should not hate relentless studios at all i don't want to see anybody like just i just 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 straight livid hatred i don't want to see any of that towards them because they don't deserve it they're, they're trying their best they're trying their best i really do think that the server stuff might have been more on the net coding issues which they probably were just not prepared for because in the closed in the closed testing, the behind closed door stuff, everything was fine. But obviously there wasn't that many people playing it. So I think the giant influx after Tim the Tapman, Dr. Lupo, Cypher PK showed off the games and then got off. And then all those people then went from watching the stream to actually trying to get into games. I think that kind of just blew everything up. And so uh, they just weren't prepared for it, which, you know, it's it, it happens. You don't expect it to happen, but should be all good now again they just need to fix up on, on the optimization stuff add in some sort of chat in game for sure i think that would be really really good and i really just think that people need a little more patience with this game this isn't like call of duty where you just jump in and you can do well in your first two hours you you really gotta understand the meta game you gotta understand the macro game and you have to understand the mechanics and how each hunter works in relation to other hunters so I hope you guys take my just take take my review with a grain of salt. I really hope you guys take my uh, review with a grain of salt because I want you guys to make your own opinions and formulate your own opinions. But I wanted to kind of make a video where somebody who's had quite a bit of experience with the game already and has seen it from multiple perspectives and multiple patches already uh, because the closed closed doors patch was different and worked a little differently. I can just say that. I am still excited for this game, and I still think there's a lot of potential for this game, and I don't think it's dead on arrival. I think people just like to freak out and bomb things negatively, but that's just my two cents. Yes, there were blatant issues that I clearly pointed out in this video. There are things that I really, really like about this game, and I made a first impressions video about that, sharing my thoughts, and most of that is still pretty accurate. So I, there's really not much to add on to that. I still have a blast playing this game and it's just super fun for me but i do see 
uh, places where they can improve, and I hope they improve on it. I can't wait to see what comes next from Crucible. I really can't. It's 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 got a lot of potential. I really do see a lot in it. Maybe maybe I see a little more than others. Maybe I'm too optimistic. But we'll see what happens. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it was long, but I really just wanted to say everything I had to say about this uh, launch. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you did enjoy, make sure you hit that notification bell after hitting that subscribe button. And I do stream on Twitch each and every single day over at twitch.tv slash BritikHD. Drop a follow over there. Catch my Crucible streams over there. As always, guys, make sure I have a wonderful day. Peace. Yo, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Help me. No, she's not. She's not gonna get me. Hell no, brother. I'm using it. I'm using. I'm, I'm using a med. I'm using a medi. Yo, I was at.